Welcome to this look at a new mod map on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. This is Purbeck Valley Farm. This is a new map by Tomex55 and it will use 352.12 megabytes. But is it Purbeck Valley Farm? I am buzzing, I mean absolutely buzzing. This is based on a real place, a real area in Dorset, right from the distance right off there is Corfe Castle. I know this area well, I've been through it, driven through it, driven round it. On numerous holidays and occasions my, my family and I love going down to Dorset and Weymouth along the coast over the range roads and out to Studden. I know the area. Not only do I know the area, this when I came on to have a look round, I suddenly thought, this seems really familiar. Why does this seem familiar to me? I couldn't place why it felt so familiar. And then it hit me. This is Naveswell Farm. Tom X 55 made Naveswell Farm and Naveswell Extended. Now this may not be the entire map, may not be the map as it was, but this bit here, this is Naveswell Farm. And Knaves Royal Farm does exist in the real world. And the map is pretty much, there's a few bits here and there, uh, how it is in the real world. And I'm blown away by that. Because this was the first ever Let's Play I watched about and on Farming Simulator 15 when Dagawin was doing his Let's Play on Knaves Royal Farm. I'd just started playing the game, I was just getting into it, and I watched every single one of them i absolutely loved them and all i wanted was for this map well not this one perbeck valley farm but naveswell to come to console and here it is and i'm smiling like an idiot because i think it's brilliant um there are some a lot of differences to that map but there are a lot of things that are still the same and as i went along this lane um heading out towards the west of the map all the various different things that were there are there some of the cell points are different, some of the locations of things are different, but this farm in essence is laid out the same way. Um, that, that's north, if we go up here we've got our farmyard and our farmhouse, I'm not tired at the moment but there's that mark in there. Um, we've got a few vehicles, we've got the bunker silos tucked around the back here, something I've already found and I, I'm loving about this map is its picturesque quality um, and the fact that everything is different. It's not that kind of same, you know, here is a, a shed, I'm going to use this shed pack and bomb, 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 every shed on the map is the same. Every yard, every shed, well I say every, you know, there are probably going to be some duplicated, but it's different. Um, the layout is very natural, because it's based on a real place. Um, cow barn is here. I'm not going to go into all the I'll try as best I can to show you the various different bits. For example, here, the cow shed. There's your buy, sell, load and unload. There's feed triggers and there's water triggers. We've got lights on most of the buildings inside and out. Um, don't run again. Like so. Um, there's your milk trigger, just there. I'll we'll show you some other bits in a minute. But as we move through, um, oh, just I'm loving it. We've got a little bit around the side here where we've got the slurry pit. And if I recall correctly, the slurry pit on here was massive. Like this huge, deep pit with almost like a pier that sticks out. You yeah, head up, and the slurry runs out and off there into this massive pit. It's it's absolutely brilliant. Um, so I am I'm hyper. Um, there's a railway on this. I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. It kind of just goes east west, and then does a loop back round again. Like I said, I'm going to explain a bit like, about that. In the real world, that's the Swanage Railway, um, the main road that runs through the middle of the map. Actually, let's have a look at the map while we're here. Um, so, Naveswell Farm, well, <laughs> Purbeck Valley Farm is up here. This is where we're starting off. Got these lanes run off here, and then we come all the way down, and you've got this main road here that runs west east east west and goes all the way around here and off. In the real world, Swanage is off in this direction. In the real world, Corfe Castle is there, Wareham is off in this direction. Um, this bit here, as close as it can be, um, is Harmon's Cross um, in the real world. Um, so some of this has been squashed a little bit, some of the road layout's not quite as it is, but there are bits of this that are incredibly familiar. Um, we have the animals spread 
all over the map um, and the animals are fixed in place contracts are available there are no custom crops and there are no custom mods the animal buildings are all in place and are not sellable I have tried on a couple of them to buy animals and it's allowed me to generally speaking you normally have to own the land to be able to do that but it has allowed me to um, as far as what we start with I always do my tours on New Farmer and New Farmer we start with a fair amount of fields and the farm here um, so 41, 42, 60, 61, 62, 35, 36 these can be sold off in separate plots if you don't want to start with all of them you want the bit with the farm generally speaking but these can be sold off separately field prices generally don't come as individuals most of them are in blocks if even if it's just two but prices are pretty okay there's forestry dotted around the map in various different locations we've got some more forests up the top here as well of varying degrees now the biogas plant you don't own the biogas plant is here but to buy the biogas plant 740,784 because it takes in these two fields as well that's pricey uh, but it is what it is that's the price for it and like I said the railway line runs across here east west um, and once it's done its loop or it's run across the map it then goes kind of under and around the map and it comes back under the map here and then comes back around again to start its loop I'm going to show you that later on the, the, this map it's frustrating in like I say I'm doing this with um, rose tinted glasses because I'm over the moon this map is here and as, as near as it can be to what I remember and what I want to play on um, but it's not without its problems there are a few issues on this and I will point them out I will highlight them um, will that make it unplayable no of course not um, but there are things that probably need to be pointed out so what I'm going to do is jump in the tractor actually before I do that I want to show you this this is like this on a lot of the areas around the map and another reason why I absolutely love it and it's got this really natural feel you've got all these little lanes and tracks around the yards and things that go out into fields now uh, some of the fields have fences and gates some have gates that don't open and close they just open all the time some have gaps some have well, like this one here the gate doesn't open and close it's open all the time but moving out into the meadow and then you've got this little track that runs down here from the dairy, from the sort of yard down into the field here it's, it's brilliant it's such a nice map lovely lovely map um, if you're playing with silly P bingo the undulations and topography of this map are quality I mean I honestly can't say enough good stuff about it um, but th again that's my personal view this may not be your cup of tea at all if you don't like um, small English British maps you're not gonna like it you can still watch the tour you can still get an appreciation or an idea for what the maps like and there's no taking away from them from the fact it's, it's, a, it's a really nicely well-made map and like I say it's gonna be challenging you've got the valley sweeps up that side away to the north and then down towards the, the railway and the river that way some of these fields are going to be difficult to to work on but that's kind of a part of the challenge that's going to be great it's not going to be one for big machinery it's not going to be one for just hiring a worker and off you go it's going to require work um, even if you do set up for a worker you're going to have to do the headlands and stuff and get to a point where a worker can work on them um, but I, I yeah I, I don't know I don't want to I don't want to be annoying but the whole kind of I really like it I really like it but I do I think let's just clear up that now I do um, fence posts and fence wiring has collisions hedges don't the hedges on here don't have any collisions which is nice in that if you are bringing machinery it's a little bit too big potentially like so it's not going to be too much of a problem you're not going to get caught up um, we are heading um, west and what I'm classifying as the top road and I'll we'll kind of show a bit more on the map as we go um, out to the first of the sale points we're going to look at now this on new farmer uses 730 of 1299 slots there's a lot of detail on here but you do start with a fair bit of machinery including a John Deere tractor and some other bits and bobs which you can pare down if you wanted to um, you don't start with any buildings or anything like that there are a few bits on here which I'm a little bit perplexed by I'm not 
sure whether they're remnants from a, from a PC or the PC version or the previous versions incarnations of this map um, but we are at um, Mole I'm going to get it right we are up the top here Mole Valley um, so we've come along from the farm here no here all along to the west and that's the first of our cell points now there's not a looping road network either that goes around here the top is very across and back and then we've got a couple of joining roads so that's why I'm calling this kind of the north road then we can join up with a couple of roads we're going to do a loop round then you've got the central road the main road that runs right the way across the map so there's going to be a lot of to and fro battles and forwards but I think when you get that on a map it makes the map feel a lot bigger so Mole Valley is one of our sale points we have the barn, gateway industrial park, Mole Valley, sawmill, spinnery and the fisherman pub um, there are, like I say, there are no custom crops so it's standard crop types um, contracts are available, did I mention that? They are available, including transport jobs, which I've just suddenly realised, and is it weird how it didn't even dawn on me, on Greenwich Valley there's no transport jobs, I've been doing that as my let's play, um, seeing that on there I suddenly thought, oh hang on a minute, um, so yeah, transport jobs as well are available, um, right, now this is the thing that's got me puzzled, because that's not showing up as anything, and I'm not too sure, I'm assuming that's a remnant from something, because that's the cell point right there, and on the map it's not showing as anything else, so, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I, it, in all likelihood, I'm, I will miss something. It's always the way, especially when you're doing a map tour on a map that's got so much to look at. And I would always urge people, even if you've watched the map tour and you think, actually, you know, I quite like that, jump on and explore. Drive around, find the... I mean, when you start doing a Let's Play or just playing on it generally, whether you're doing a storyline or not, you're going to go around and find bits of the map that you didn't see on a map at all, that you, that you didn't know existed. And I will do exactly the same thing, because there is so much going on on this map. Um, it's brilliant. Like I said, there aren't that many cell points, but because you're doing these routes in and out, there's plenty of grass fields, plenty of arable that you can be doing, and the animals are all represented. There is a huge placeables area, and there is a sheep pasture too. Um, the opinions are normally divided with regard to animals. Some people like the animals all to be in one place around one farm. Other people prefer them to be spread around all over the place and then you can kind of treat it as separate farms if you want to. That again, that is a personal preference. It may be for you, that's the, the, the kind of, you know what, I don't like that, it's not for me. It might be, you know, give it a go. I'm not going to head that way, that's why we're going to come back up right at the very end. There are bunker silos dotted around all over the place. Again, they're not sellable, um, but I, I like I like a lot the the landscape and and you'll see in a minute as we drive along here the very kind of real feel quality, the cottages and buildings and gardens and you know the farm right up to the road. You know, and the fact that the road kind of goes through the middle of a farm. When you drive around the English countryside, you get that a lot. So we're now still on that top road. We've got the chicken farm just here with all these little side courtyards and buildings. and It's brilliant. Really very nice indeed. Um, now, as we come down here, I love the sun glinting off that. There are custom textures and things. Now, this is the sheep farm, or at least, yeah, the sheep farm, because then we've got a sheep pasture as well. So we'll come down into the yard here. Barns and buildings, plenty of them all over the place. Bunker silo here, and there's another one just over here as well. Um, that's your. I'm assuming that's the wall trigger. I, th I would. I th or not the wall trigger. The wall spawn point, because our buy, sell, load, and unload point is just here for our sheep. That's right there. Uh, we've got feed trigger across the front there, and then if we go around the side and into the meadow, for the sheep, we've got a water trough. Just off to the left here. Now as to how many animals these hold, because these are not placeable mods, they're built in, I'm really not 100% certain. It doesn't say on the Mod Hub. Also on the Mod Hub website, it doesn't say whether it's season's ready, and there are no pictures that show it with snow or anything like that. There's always the assumption that these maps are, but the fact it doesn't specify, I couldn't say for certain whether it is or not. Um, so there's your, your water trough. And I, what I also like is the fields, the grass fields, are not all uniform. You've got these kind of patches now. Whether these will grow <coughs> or stay as they are, I don't know. But this is how I kind of have come onto the map and this is how they are. But I like that as a feature. 
the fences and hedges and things are different all over the place. There's bits of wall. Again, it's not generic. It's not that kind of plonk, 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 plonk. Here's a load of fences. Here's a load of hedges. It all, it all feels very different every part of the map. So, continuing on from here, we're going to head down towards the biogas plant. Where did I leave the tractor? All up lane here. But as you can see, even with uh, without hedge collisions, you're not going to get massive machinery around here. It's not going to be for big harvesters. Look, little lanes going up. And there's all these little courtyard bits. The gates open. You can put machinery dotted about. You know, again, I'm already, my head's whirring with ideas for Let's Plays. And I'm almost 100% certain I'm going to be doing a Let's Play on here. Because of the way I felt and feel about Naveswell and wanted Naveswell Farm to come and I'm going around this thinking this is wow this is exactly what I was always wanted to do um, myself and CDG my daughter when we first got into the game it was during one of the school holidays a few years ago now and we were staying up till like one two three in the morning just watching let's play after let's play after let's play and Naveswell like I say was the first one I watched so and I, I know I get it I keep going about Naveswell and it is Purbeck Valley Farm I understand that um, but the, the feel of it's here, you know. <clears throat> so, the road ahead goes off to the edge of the map and then comes back again. There are fields off that way, but we are going to head this way now. So we're heading south. And we're going to get out onto the main road in a minute. We're going to go out and check out the biogas plant. There's a couple of cell points down there as well. I think we've got the barn and spinnery, I think, are down there. We're going to have to check that out. When we come back on the main road, we're going to go under the railway bridge, and that's where I'm going to talk a little bit more about the railway, and I'll show you what I mean about that. Like I say, there are a couple of bits on here that are, are puzzling, and um, are, there are a couple, of, like, a couple of negatives, but like I say, they're not deal breakers. It's not, you know, it's such a negative that the map's unplayable, because there are kind of workarounds for a couple of the bits. But, and like I say, I think the positives for me, personally, far outweigh any negatives I've come across so that's what it's all about at the end of the day um, it's very unusual to find an absolutely perfect map there's always going to be something or usually there's something so we are pretty much on the very eastern side of the map and pretty much halfway down now so coming into the biogas plant which is pretty pricey to buy the first bunker silo is not usable but it does have silage in it um, with the cover pulled back and tyres on the top again it gives that feel that it's being used, you know, it's already a, you know, there's stuff happening. Two big bunker silos to my right. As we come around, we've got the barn cell point just there. And then we've got the tip in point for the digester just there. And the digestate tank up here with the pipe. So the byproduct from anything you put into the bunker silo, uh, into the biogas plant, your digestate as byproduct will come out there. Now the spinnery. It's just over here, and this is one of the one of the first of, or one of the points I wanted to highlight. Any of you that watch my mod reviews regularly will know my kind of taste test for mods and stuff like that is that the decals and detail. Um, and when you look around the map at the, at the detail and everything on here, and again, this is, I say it's a, it's, a, it's nitpicking. It really is. Um, the spinnery is just over here. It's not marked, but when you put on like the green tube, and I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go into the menu here and we go across to the cell points and I go to the spinnery and then tag place you get the green column that's where it says the spinnery is which is fine you know and I know it's there now but it's like little bits like this that are really blurry it's a minor thing but like I say when you look at the detail now that could be just the crossover from PC to console it happens the coding sometimes you know you get these little areas and I've found it on all sorts of maps in all sorts of locations but it's one of those things you can't hide either I can't you know I'm not going to go around the entire map because I'm gushing and excited about it's a map I've wanted to play on for ages and ages um, and just constantly going about how wonderful it is when people say well hang on a minute he just skipped over that or he just missed that or you know that's the whole point of doing a map tour and and or review have we want to look at it so that's three cell points there we are now heading west along the main road in the real world this is the a351 <laughs> that takes you from where and right the way through Corfe castle and out towards swanage so we're going to go under the railway now when we go a little bit further under i'm going to pull over there's a little some buildings i'm going to pull into the 
driveway we'll have a look on the map again and I'll explain to you what I mean about the trains but there is a workaround um, now I'm assuming that, you know on some maps you have a train that just you know every now and again will drive a loop or go along a loop and it gives it that nice immersive feel makes the map feel alive you know um, so if we go back to the map and we'll see the railway line again so we've just gone under the bridge here and the train will go along there now they've made it on here so you can go on the train if you want to which is fine but because it then gets to the end and does a loop round the half of the loop the train does is kind of off the map and I'll show you what I mean I don't normally tab what I'm gonna do is tab and then hang on a minute have I got it turned off have I honestly got this turned off already? Uh, where do I want? Oh yeah, <laughs> brilliant. So this is your option. <laughs> there, if you're new to the game or you're not sure, what, if you've never been on a map that's got trains on or wherever it might be, switch to trains there. You can turn that on or off. So if there's a map that's got a train that you can drive or go on, if that's on, you can tab into it. If that's off, you can't. You have to go, actually go to the train to get on it. So if I tab, put that on, and I now tab, might be back. There we go. So now we're on the train, and we are going east to west, which is lovely. You know, you get to go on the train and experience the landscape. Now the train is a kind of standard train, but there's no cell points along the track. Um, there's not really anywhere you can load onto the train, and there wouldn't be much point because there's nowhere to unload off the train so it's kind of one of those things that it's nice to have it and going across the map and make it feel like the map's alive but personally I would switch the tab to trains off because when we get off the other other side I'm going to speed up and go to 49 we'll go through the tunnel at the other end and it all goes a little bit um, you know you'll see I mean don't get me wrong going across and taking in the scenery is lovely and I've been on this, the Swanage Railway, many times with my kids um, from Swanage out to Corfe Castle. It's a lovely journey. There's Corfe Castle up on the hill there. Not this sort of train, actually. I think it was a steam train we were on when we did it. But anyway, so come into the tunnel now and you'll see what I mean. And then it does a loop round and it all goes a little bit weird so that's there you go so now we're on to this bit here not something you really want to be kind of experiencing so personally if it was me i would go onto that tab switch to, to trains off so you can't tab into them um but again it's one of those things to show you you can go on the train the train is there it will go but it's possibly one of those things you might not want to actually do um and one of those things, I'm a, I'm a little bit puzzled why it's there as an option. Um, but regardless of that, let's continue. Um, off to the south here, we've got a river that runs across. There is a ford across there because there's two big fields. There's two big fields off to the south you can get to if you go across the ford. Um, which is a nice touch. There are, like I said, there are some really nice features on this. So, continuing kind of westward and they go into the store I think we're heading for now the store there's a fuel station and there's another cell point this is the in gateway industrial estate I think but looking at the landscape wow brilliant um, I will show you as well the vehicles and machinery we start with in a minute because again you might want to pare that down um, did I say just that if you come on new farmer it's 730 or 1299 slots if you come on as farm manager or start from scratch that's 694 weirdly I can't tell what the difference is as far as I can tell all of the machinery and equipment is exactly the same and you do start with all the same machinery and equipment for some reason on new farmer it's 36 slots on console higher than it is on start from scratch or farm manager and I don't know why it's a bit of an odd one but anyway on our right we have the store just 
Front of the gates. Fantastic. Um, so we've got our pie point just there with its trigger. Um, light switches again. They're all over the place. For our outside. There we go. Outside light switch. Most of the sheds have them on the inside as well. Uh, and then we've got our trigger here for our workshop for um, selling, customising, repairing. That looks like that's going to be a big enough entrance for larger machinery, should you need to do any repair work here. But you can always set yourself up. There's plenty of modded um, toolboxes and various different things you can use. I must admit, I didn't see a workshop at the main farm. I didn't notice that. But anyway, right. So across the road, we've got our other sale point. This is the... Uh, Gateway Industrial Park. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. We will check back on the map because I don't want to get that wrong. So we've come all the way along here. Yeah, we go Gateway Industrial Park. We've just come down here. So we're now here. Shop, Gateway Industrial, and there's a fuel station just there. That road also finishes. That's the edge of the map. And the Ford I was talking about is there, I think, pretty much there across the river to get to field 17 and 18. Um, so what we're going to do now is just, I think it's right the way around the back I'm pretty sure it's <coughs> excuse me right in the back here where is it <laughs> it's around here somewhere there we go there's a cell point just around there right now the rest of the machinery and I haven't shown you the machinery um, so go to our garage and we start with um, drop nose Massey 5613 the favorite 511c we do start with the John Deere 6135m TX32 harvester pickup header and then trailer and we've got plows and cultivators and cedars uh first size of spreader slurry spreader mower tedder wind rower front loader attachments couple of weights and a header trailer um and like i say that all as far as i can make out is exactly the same on all three but for some reason on the other two the slot counts lower and i, I honestly can't fathom why but it's, it's again that is what it is but you could pair that down you might not want to start with three tractors or you might not want to start with that harvest or whatever it might be um so you can get that slot count down should you wish to i'll jump back in the tractor um but uh, some of the machinery is up at the farm where we started but some of the machinery is at the farm we're just about to go to um and at that farm, there's another one of the little slight niggles I've got. And it's, like I say, it is only a slight niggle. Will it stop me playing on the map? No. Will it stop me enjoying playing on the map? No. But it's worth, i say it's worth pointing out. It's obvious, but I'm, you know, It's worth mentioning, it's probably the best thing, I suppose. So, sorry, bumpy track. I do like all the little kind of I know again not everyone likes all the random things just left all over the place a lot of people don't like especially when it's rubbish piles and stuff like that and I understand that um, people don't like to see that and don't think that should be part of it I'll be honest every farm's different I've been on various different farms and seen various different farms that are immaculate I've also been on and around farms which are just like this bits of machinery old gates and things knocking about all over the place you know, on one of the journeys I do up in the Lake District, there's an old harvester, combine harvester, just sat amongst the trees by the side of the road, gradually rusting away. And it's one of those things you think, wow, why, why, you know, it's not even near a farm, it's just in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, so, other farm. Uh, we've got the John Deere here with the fertiliser on the back of it. Lots of barn space again here. Different bits of machinery. This building here is fascinating. I think it's supposed to be, or it is a grain dryer. The harvesters in here, but you've got these kind of silo sections here for putting your grain and stuff in. But then up here, you've got the fans and the dryer sections and this walkway across the top. I don't think I've encountered a building like this before, on console especially. Um, fascinating. I mean, the grain dryer does, it doesn't work on console. It's not like it's a, a working thing, but it's an interesting building, nevertheless. Which brings me on to the slight issue, because... To get to that, you need to go through the door, which is um, odd. This one's the same. Kind of a three-quarter door. It's like the building's sunk into the ground. But it hasn't, because the door frames are the right size. It's a bit of an odd one. And like I say, will that stop you playing on the map? No. Are you more likely to just use the main door than the side doors anyway? Probably. But it's there. It's one of those aesthetic things you look and think, oh, 
you know um is that something that would require an update it probably would require an update would it get an update for something like that i wouldn't have thought so but again you never know potentially um no shortage of shelter space but like i say it's there it's kind of obvious it's, you can't I can't hide away from it so the rest of the machinery and there's all sorts of buildings and stuff tucked away is all over here what i'm going to do now is jump in the pickup for the next bit of the tour because it'll be a little bit quicker i think to get where we need to go so what i'm going to do is jump in the pickup and like i said do you need to own the farms to be able to do stuff on them i don't think you do um sometimes you do it also it always depends on the map um sometimes you can't buy any animals unless you own the, the land sometimes it will let you buy them but then you can't feed them unless you own the land i guess the rule of thumb is the best bet is just buy the land if you if you want to use it and you're going to you want to own it buy it and then you won't have any problems at all but like i say i did buy a horse when i came around and did a kind of check around the map and it allowed me to buy the horse and, and it was on the, on the land i didn't own the land but then i didn't try and feed it or anything so potentially we are going to do that road in a minute but what we're going to do first is head along the main road and we're going to take in the last of the cell points along here and on the way back we're going to take in the uh, uh, horse stables and the pig farm so over the bridge and round the bend we've got the fisherman pub and cell point which is just there the fields are all different shapes and sizes and i i, I love that again that's the personal thing not everyone does you know a lot of people prefer big square or rectangular fields you can just you know whack a worker on big machine and off you go and again i totally get that and that's the beauty of there being so many maps available you know you can really pick and choose what you like so here we've got the livestock market it does open in doesn't it please tell me it opens in no oh. <laughs> now you can drive a kind of loop around if you want to there is a gate further around to that side you can drive all the way around but for speed we can get around this side and our load unload buy sell trigger is just here so if you want to transport the animals yourself you can loads of different cows in there and calves and stuff very cool and then carrying on westward we go to the last of the sell points which is the sawmill and heading out towards Corf castle i think we get fairly close to it from this this side of the map you can see it just over there in a minute there we go look up on the hillside it's cool. Like I said at the start, if, if nothing else, you can just get a bit of a feel for the map and what it's like. Most people will form their impression within the first few minutes of whether they like it or not and whether it's something they'd like to play on. But there's your lumber point and your wood chip cell point. It's just over there for the sawmill. Like I said, there are a few different forests, a few bits knocking about. Um, so if you do like doing a bit of forestry, there is something there for you to do if you want to do that. I just like the differing nature of it all. It's not too uniform, you know. It, that's probably one of the things I'm liking most. It's going to have a natural feel because it's based on a real place, you know. It's got that... It, it's natural. That, that's This is how it's kind of all formed. Dare I use the word pretty? Have I already said pretty? It's a, it's a pretty map. It's, you know... I think the use of the colour palette, the textures, the various different terrain features is done sparingly enough. Uh, on some maps you go on, there's too much of one particular colour or flower or too much of it in one place. I think it's done tastefully, I think, as well as another word to use. It's, it's done right, you know? Is that a hop garden? I see posts through there. Could be. Hop fence. So, back over the bridge. And we're going to take a left. Now, just over the bridge there is a gateway that takes you into the back um, of the stables. We're going to go around in the main entrance, but the stables are just here. And there's like an exercise area, training area for the horses there. But we're going to take the turning here. And this is the road that leads all the way back up so when i first came out the farm and said we're not going to go down that road that's where we're going to come back up this is the road that brings us back up 
If you look down the bottom left, you can kind of see we're heading up now. Um, and the stable is just up here. We will go back under the railway in just a moment. As we come into the yard. Interestingly though, the trigger, buy, sell, load or unload trigger, is right here. Not over by the actual stable itself. So if we can do it from here, like for example, I'll put a, I'll put one in, why not? Like I say, it's allowed me to do it. I don't own the land, but it has allowed me to put one in. The feed trigger is just here. If we jump the fence here, the water trough, there we go, there's our horse. The water trough's just around the side there. And the horses can wander all the way around there and around the side too. Um, you can open and close this gate, so when the horses do need exercise, you can either go gallivanting around the map, or you can bring them here to the training area and do some jumps and stuff like that, if, you want, if that's... If you're so inclined. And then we're going to go under the railway bridge and to the pig farm. Now there is one more sheep, let's say farm, sheep pasture. And it's another one of those features I like. Um, I do like it when you get that, that you can if you want to go down that kind of storyline narrative. With seasons on it's a lot easier because you can do the whole pasture thing because they will eat the grass out of the meadow. Um, but you can still go down that narrative route if you want to. Um, if you're not running seasons, which again, it's, it's a nice feature. I like that. Again, it's what I was talking about. Some gateways are open, some don't have gates at all, some have bits of wall down. Um, it, it's not all the same, and that's a real positive for me. So, into the yard. Cool. More buildings and space. Feed trough is just there for the pigs. Our trigger is just here for buying, selling, loading or unloading. Slurry pit is there. Water trough is there. But what I also like is this. Again, it's not generic. It's not a generic, here's a pig pen plonk on, on the map. It sweeps down into this kind of muddy bog down the bottom here where the pigs will go and wallow and again, I don't know, it's just cool, it's cool so we're going to head up the road, we're going to go to the placeable point I was talking about and then we'll whiz up the little track and we'll have a look at the uh, pasture now I'll be honest with you, when I first had a whiz around the map to have a quick look just to kind of orient myself and familiarise myself with the map. I had real trouble with the gate up here. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to work alright. Only time will tell. So, just off the right, and it's a huge baseball area. Oh, that was something I was going to say. There's no silo. You don't start with a silo. Um, so you might want to either find somewhere to place one, or something like this, the big placeable area. You might want to add cell points in. There are plenty of cell point mods knocking about. So you might decide this area here... Please open. Oh, that's so weird. I'm having the same problem again. Right, let's come at it from this way. See if I can get it to open this time. There we go. That's weird, it wouldn't open from the other side, but it will do from this side. Um, so yeah, you might decide, actually, I'm going to put a new cell point here. You know, use a whole load of the placeables, there's you know, the new parking, um, like all the cars, and there's so many things you could do. Or just have your entire farm here, however you want to go about it. So it's a huge placeable area. Nice and flat. And um, what we're going to do is finish off. The lane goes right the way back up, and you can see the farm up there. So you follow the lane up and come back around to where we started. But if we follow this track right the way out... You can see on the map, bottom left, that we are heading east again to a sheep trigger. So if you wanted to bring your sheep from the sheep farm to the pasture, you do have a water trough. There is a feed trough. But what is often the case with sheep pastures is there's nowhere for wool for pallets to spawn. So if you bring your sheep out into a field like this, normally you won't get any wool while they're out here. But you can go through the motions of of doing this. 
Um, but it's nice, I, you know, I, I certainly can't see somewhere where the wall pallets might spawn. Just wondering if there's one over here by the gate or something, but it doesn't look like it. But yeah, that's sheep pasture. Um, and that is pretty much it. I mean, that's Purbeck, Purbeck Valley Farm um, by Tomex55. Um, as I always say when I do these tours, um, I, I'm likely to have missed something. Um, plus, usually within a couple of weeks of a map coming out, there'll be an update of some description because players will find all different things. It's no different to a game coming out as a map and a mod. Modders, map makers can only go so far. Any issues and bugs and problems often present themselves when you're testing it yourself, you're one person. When a mod or a map gets released and then all of a sudden thousands of people are playing on it, those thousands of people will go into places and areas and do things you weren't expecting and find issues. So will there be an update for this? Potentially. Um, will it fix any of the issues I've highlighted? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. But like I said before, I'm hyper about this map being out. One, because I know the area. Two, because it's as near as you can get to Naveswell Farm. Um, and that's brilliant for me. The map is beautiful. I like the terrain, the topography. You know, I know I, I didn't want to end on a negative because there have been there are so many positives to this map, I think, personally. And that is, as always, my personal opinion. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the kind of tour around, got a feel for it. I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then of course, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, thanks for watching.